Hello and welcome to Psych 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about Azure AI. A simple demonstration of the complete Azure AI from end to end how you can utilize this feature. This is going to be a power packed demonstration and please watch this video till the end to get more clarity on these topics. And about the terminologies and the short term about these things. I am also adding some short YouTube shorts on this so that you can also learn small, small things within a minute kind of thing. So subscribe to my channel and like this video before going further. And let me share my screen and then we'll start the demo. All right, so this is a power apps which I have developed here and this is basically in the behind the scene. It is communicating to Azure AI in order to get our prompt and do the response back here. So we can add our prompt here and then we'll see the result on this one. And we have a two services which is Azure Open AI and Azure AI. We'll talk about that a little bit later part of this video. So for example, if I add a question here, why some February has 29 days and if I click on this send Azure Open AI, so it will send this prompt to Azure Open AI and it will return back the result on this a part here. February 29 has in leap years which occurs every four years and this is because the Earth's orbit around the sun takes approximately 365.25 days to complete to account of this extra time and extra days added to the calendar every four year. That's amazing, right? And if I ask something about this one, how many planets do we have in our solar system? And now I'm sending it to Azure AI and I'm also returning the same result on this part. So there are eight planets in our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. So now I will ask why Pluto is not there because when we studied in our school time, Pluto is also one of the planet and now it is no more. So why it is not available? So if I ask the question, Pluto is not considered a planet anymore because it is reclassification by the International Astronauts Union in 2006. Yeah, I studied before to that in school, so that's why it was there and now it is removed from that because of its uh, Pluto is now classified as a dwarf planet. That's how amazing, right? So now let's look into how these things works behind the scene. So first of all, what are the things which you need here in order to work on this? So basically um, you need Azure AI. Right, and then you need Azure AI Open AI because we are using two of these technologies and then we also need Power Automate because that is where we are using the API and also we need Power Apps. The reason why I selected these three, I mean the Power Apps and Power Automate is because if you are a citizen developer, I don't, you don't know about how to write code, you don't know about Python or C Sharp, then this is a good way to can start up building your application using Power Apps, Power Automate with low code or no code kind of feature. That's really cool, right? So, and now as you need to have access to Azure Open AI, Azure Open AI is basically not open to everyone. It is actually available for a limited based on the access. You need to request an access, then only it will, they will give you the access for that. So how it can be done? So basically you need to go to this form which is available here. If I go to this uh, website, what is Azure Open AI? And here they have given how to get access to Azure Open AI. Because the reason is AI is the thing which is helpful for business users and in, in some ways it is also not helpful because of the responsible AI. We need to confirm about the usage of this AI, then only they are going to give you the access. The chat GPT, which is actually open, the open AI, which is the chat GPT 3.5, which is free to public. You can make use of that. But if you want to integrate to your own application and you want to build something like this, then you need to have access as a kind of Azure. They are providing Azure open AI. So now let's talk about before going to that in detail, we'll talk about what is the difference between Azure AI and Azure open AI. So Azure AI is basically covered only to open AI. So they have tied up with OpenAI service and this OpenAI, the ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo and ChatGPT 4 is actually available in Azure OpenAI. If you can see it here, the model ChatGPT 4, 
Turbo and 3.5 Turbo series are also available on this Azure OpenAI. So you can make use of this and also you have a total control about the content filtration. If you use the direct open source, then it is not available, which is generally public. So you can't able to filter the content if something which is not uh, user friendly. I mean, the harmful content are there. If something is requested, which is not a recommended thing for the world, then you can also filter the content based on the limitations what you can set up here. Um, and that's why the prompt completions are evaluated against the content policy and automated risk system. High sensitive content will be filtered. So that's the useful feature of using Azure in that case. So now the difference here is OpenAI is only with OpenAI itself, but Azure AI here actually consists of all the Azure AI features. So what are those covered here is like Azure AI vision and Azure speech, Azure language detection and also Azure language detection and also Azure decision making and Azure OpenAI services. So not only it stops here, we can have all this functionality inside to Azure AI, but apart from that, we'll also have a content filtration. And not only that, in AI, Azure AI, we can also integrate with other large language models. So Open AI is one of the large language models, right? So similarly, we can have a large language models from Meta, which is Llama model, and we can also integrate with Hugging Face, and we can also integrate with NVIDIA. So there are other private entity owned by LLMs, so we can make use of those LLMs as well. That's a really big thing which you can use it in Azure AI. So that's how and then the Power Automate and Power Apps, you may need a premium license for both of them because we are going to use Power Automate premium feature, which is using calling a HTTP function, which is basically a premium feature. So these are some prerequisites now. So let's look into it now in detail. So how can I get access? So basically you can have a link here. If I click on that, it's opening up this page. Request access to Azure OpenAI service. So here you need to agree certain terms and condition and you need to specify few more details. First name, last name, how many subscription ID you want here. And it is actually they are providing it by subscription ID, even not by tenant. You have to give it the subscription and not by tenant. So basically how you can do is basically you can go to portal.azure.com and once you log into your Azure portal and here you have a subscription. And here you can create one subscription additionally for accessing these AI services. And right now I'm using is this subscription ID here. And if you want to add more subscription, you can also add subscription here. And depending on that subscription, you need to copy and paste the subscription ID and then give it to them. So then only they can able to give you the access upon this one. So they are not giving access by tenant. They are just giving access by subscription ID. And not only that, you also need to fulfill other things here. And also you need to make sure this should not be a personal email ID. It has to be official email ID. So that's an important thing here. Then you need to provide your company address name, city, state, zip code. So usually they are fast. If you request now, they will be activated within a four hours kind of time. Generally, they will take like 24 or 48 hours, but they do it quickly itself as per my experience. So there are other features here which you need to opt here. So what are the tools? I mean, the technology which you want to opt here, ChatGPT 3.5, DAL-E, which is useful for the image generation. And here the whisper model for OpenAI, which is speech to text. So and this is also the vision that ChatGPT 4 if you want to use. You can select all of them and then you need to acknowledge the terms and condition without that because this is basically useful for responsible AI. So you are responsible for all this activity if something goes wrong because of this information which you're extracting from these large language models. And then if you submit this one, they will give their access to use this feature. That's it. Now, the next part here is after getting access, you need to go to Azure subscription and then if you go home, now you have a two methods where you can access this. One is either you can create Azure AI service or you can directly create single single services. If you click on Azure AI service, which I have created here, for example, this will actually has the power of using all the other capabilities of AI within using one single endpoints and key. So usually whenever we are trying to access any services, we need to provide few things, which is endpoints and key. So we need to provide these two information and also sometimes we may need about the location. 
So these are the three things which is really required and which we need to use in other technology, whether you are using it for JSON, you are using it for C sharp or using in HTTP for Power Automate, you need to provide these three information. Either you can use a services and from here you can get this information. So if I click on Azure AI services here, here I can see this is the one which I created. And now you can see we have the key, key and endpoint also we have it here. So this is a large language model endpoints where you can get and if I click on on the left side, I have a keys and endpoint where I will get this information about key, key location and all of these endpoints which we can need to copy and use it in our application. So that's one way. And how you can create that basically you need to log into Azure AI and then on the overview page you just need to click any of these services here. Right and these are the services which it is available on Azure AI. Either you can create separately from here Azure AI search, computer vision, face API. So I'm going to cover about these short informations in shorts as well as in future. If you like, please let me know in the comment section below. I will cover one by one each of the topics in the future videos. So here I have Azure AI multi-service account. So this is what you need to click on create and then provide the information. If I click on create, for example, then this will open up a window which is similar to all the other Azure services. Usually you need to select your subscription and then you need to select your resource group and usually your uh, region and you need to give it a name here and also the pricing sector. So what do you need to use here? So depending on that, you can select your pricing and then you need to agree the terms and condition and then if you want to add tags and then review and create. Those are all the same similar process which is generally for all Azure services. All right, after creating this one, so now I have this uh, Azure AS services. I have copied the endpoint and keys and also the locations. Now, the next thing here is if you want to create a separate separate services, like for example, if I click on Azure OpenAI, you can click here. It will open up this window and then you can click on create. Then it will also the same window. You need to provide the subscription, resource group and location and region, I mean region and then name and then pricing. You need to select all these things and then click on create. Similarly, I have created this one which is like 18 open AI and if I click here and this service will also have a keys and endpoint for that. So to develop things, I need these keys and endpoints. So I can click here and then I can copy the key and also the location and also the endpoint to this one. So once, so once I click on that and if I go back to the overview, here on the right side, I have two options. One is explore and deploy, which is go to Azure OpenAI Studio and then I have built generative AI apps, which is built in Azure AI Studio. So there are two things here. So what is the difference between these two is like I said, here this is only linked with OpenAI, which is Azure OpenAI. And here it is linked with all the other technologies of the Llama model of Facebook, Hugging Face, you can also interact with other things inside of that. So this is a one single platform, which is, is still in preview. It will come up in, in near soon. So if you want to go to this portal, then you can just click on go to Azure OpenAI Studio. It will open up in a new window and here you need to do few steps. Before using it into your Power App, Power Apps or Power Automate or any other application. All right, so we have these many things here. We have a chat playground, completion playground, Dali playground. We'll cover about that these things in maybe in future videos, but not on this one. These are the functionality which it has. So first thing what we need to do here is we need to click on models. Just to look what are the models which we have. So here we have these many models which is Turbo 3.5 and GPT Turbo 3.5 also here and this is a model version here and Turbo 16K. This is the one which we are going to use now and all the other thing here which is ADA model and also we have embedding ADA. This is helpful for vector sets. And if you want to create a new thing, then you can click on create a custom model. If you want to build here, then you can need to click on base model. This is a lengthy process which we will cover in future one. So if you want to deploy something, you just need to select any of this one and click on deploy. So here you need to select the model version of this one. This is this and you need to give it a name here. So click on advanced one. Then I have the option here tokens per minute rate thousands. So how many tokens it has to generate per minute? So it can be, you can set it to be like 5,000. It will actually, it depends on the resource and the cost it will occur based on your state. So token is basically uh, the keyword which is 
available what you are giving as a prompt and also the output of that. So for example, the token which I have used here, why Pluto not there, right? So this is looks like there are four words here, but if I use that the tokenizer, it will also give the result how it actually works. So let's quickly have a look into that. Yeah, tokenizer open a platform. So if I add my text here, why Pluto is not there? You see it says like four tokens and how it is split here. Why Pluto not there are four different tokens. And if I add the other questions, why some February has 29 days? So paste here, why to one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Even though there are six words here, but it has automatically taken, this has seven tokens here. So why some February has, and then space separately one, and then 29 and days. That's how it actually works. And if I copy this one, how many planets do we have? Here it has taken 11 here. How many plan adds? So the planets split into two, even though just a spelling mistake, that's fine. So we do have in our solar system. So this is how the token actually works. So similarly, that's the reason we need to specify here. So generally we can keep it for 5,000 a starting point. And if you want to add more, you can also do that. So once you deploy on this one, you will see this here on the deployment tab on the left side. This is what I deployed here. And you can see uh, we have this JAT GPT name and we have this standard model 5,000 tokens per minute. And then we succeeded here. This is the limitations here. All right. Now, if you want to add your own data, so you can click on the data files here. Then you can upload your new data set here. If you click here, then you have an option to drag, drag and drop your PDF file or any JSON file, or you can also connect to your Azure Blob Storage. We'll cover that in future videos. And also we have a content filter, which is still in preview. Like if you want to specify some strict content filtration, you can also make use of that. Here we have hate and sexual and self-harm and also the violence. These are the terms uh, which we want to avoid as a kind of input and output from the chat GPT. Um, so this is the one we can make use of that. So now after doing all these things, we have three options, which is chat, completion and DALI. So let's talk about the chat now because that's what we are going to cover in today's video. Now you must see there is a lot of things which you need to cover, right? Yeah, it is actually a lot of things, but it's not difficult. If you follow along with me, it will be easier journey. So hopefully we'll cover that. And I really recommend you to share this video with others, like this video, and also let me know in the comment section below how you can take it further. This will help me a lot in order to proceed further. All right, this is the chat playground here. And on the left side, we have the chat assistant where you are providing some information to the system actually. So right now you can see it here on the left side, you have system message. message. You are an A assistant that help people find information, just the information about that. And right, and these are the examples which you have. If you want to add some instruction to the system, like for example, I'm using it here. You are an A assistant that helps people find information only about flowers. All right, after that, I need to click on apply changes. So continue. So whatever we have previously, it will erase here on this canvas. So right now, this will going to give information only about flowers. Now, if I ask the same questions, how many wife from February has 29 days here? The copy and paste here and send a response to this one. February has 29 days leap year, which occurs every four years, but that's really strange how it actually giving me the result. OK, so let's have a look into this parameter now. So in the parameter, you have these different options. Now we are going to talk about this temperature here. Temperature is basically refers to the creativity of the model. So if it is set to zero, then it's not going to make any creativity because these are generated to AI, right? So this will give the same response every time. But if you set it to be one, this will give the new response apart from the existing response, some creativity inside to that. So let's set it to be zero and then ask the same question again. Let me clear this first and clear the instruction. So it has to give information only about flowers, but um, strange why it is giving me information about this. Usually it has to filter, uh, but somehow it is not actually filtering that one. We'll see about that in other things. But now what I want to show here is uh, this is how the playground works and you can set up the parameters, everything here. And in order to use these things in Power Automate, what we need. So basically you need to click on view code here. 
and on the top you see this is the link and it is now showing up in python we actually need in json uh, if you want to use that and we can also use the c shop if you are using it into application and also by the way i have this made in c shop as well we'll talk about that in future video and we have also in curl here how uh, we can also make use of json so as we are using it in power automate and using the http response so we need the json here this is how it is information the message role you are an a assistant that help people find information only for flowers and these are the temperature and other parameters which is here and here at the bottom you see this is basically the endpoint url and this is the key for that so both of them the three of them basically you need to copy and use it in your application now let's go into power automate yeah this is the one so basically now you can see um what i added here i just use options when when i button click using power apps so that's why if i go back here and create a new flow and then instant load flow where i have an option here power apps so if i click on that then whenever the button click in power apps it is actually going to respond that so after that i have taken here add and then add an action which is basically the http action click here and then http and here you can see we have a http action which is this one http so once i click on that this is open up this window and here i need to provide the uri of this one and the method i need to select the post method from here and the uri is basically the one which is copied from here the uri you just need to copy here and paste it over there that's the one okay so now we have that a uri as well and here in the headers you need to type api hyphen key and then you need to enter your api key which is copied from the previous screen and in the body you just need to copy and paste everything so whatever you had over there in the body section you need to copy and paste everything like here everything the only change what you need to do here is basically on the content so content you have uh, the you are an a assistant that'll help people find information right that's the only thing the additional thing which you need to add here on this point you need to add a comma and then curly bracket open and close and instead of that you need to add role of the user and then the content from that so why the reason for this is basically the role system is basically we are defining the role of the system which is for the chat gpt and here that's the content you are an a assistant that help people find information we are giving them the instruction about that and if you want to control something like only for the flowers only for the animals you can also make control over here and the role for the user is basically what is the input from the user that's what we need to get right so we need to add the role of the user and content basically if i click here and you need to click on this lightning symbol and here you need to click on input from power apps but i forget to tell you one thing is like if you click on power apps here basically you need to add an input that's what i did here power apps input and this has to be text input if you click here we have a multiple things here i just need to select the first one which is text input so then only i can able to select this option here inside to this area click here lightning symbol and power of input this is the one which is added over there rest everything is same nothing need to worry about that so after that i just use few things which is compose and phrase json compose is just i'm using it here in order to compose the body message of the http response which is here http body compose nothing but it's a variable compose click here and add an action and if you type here variable as uh, sorry the compose you have data operation and compose so that's what is selected here similarly we also have a phrase json first json if i click here yeah first json we have so i just use your first json option so if i click here it's nothing but it's the same thing the body of this uh, http response and after that i'm using it initializing a variable because i want to add that value into the variable so variable i just given name here with query result and it's a string variable and then what i'm using it here for each so for each what so for each body of that json first json so if there are multiple things inside to that so that's why i thought to make a loop inside to that so for each of this i am using it in append value for this initializing of variable for each value in the first json because i will tell you the reason after this one 
we have a multiple output from the JSON, so we need to extract only the part of that. So that's why I'm extracting that. For each of the JSON, I am using this query output here. Append to the string value, and this is basically the message which I have taken it from this JSON value. Items for each message and content. This is the most important thing which you need to add, which is items open bracket for each because that's the step which is previously one and message and content. So I'm just taking the message inside to the content area. Right, that's what we need to add here and we need to respond it back to our apps. So I click on add an action and we have a parallel action and here we also have power apps. We have respond to a power apps flow. This is the one which I used here. So and if I click on that, here we can just give it a name which is a prompt result and the output of this one is basically the variable. So select here, that's the name variable query result. So that's the name of the variable which we added here, right? So now if I go back here and have a look into the previous run, what it gives me the result. If I click on this, Uh, this is failed to load maybe because of the new designer here. So let's turn off the new designer for now. Okay, my flows here. All right. The yeah, JSON fails to load here. We'll check into another flow. We'll see. Yeah, they actually JSON results multiple things. So that's why we are used here message content, right? So we are taking to pick up from that information. So that's the reason I use that. So once you use that and use into power apps here. Now let's go into power apps. So power apps nothing but I just created blank tablet power apps here. I have made a separate videos on power apps things. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you to go and watch that video. So here I added here multiple things, which is the text input, which is I can insert here and text lab, um, text input to text here. I just used here for a different see the background of this one, the borders, everything. And here the regular text label and two buttons I added here. Now on the left side, you have a power automate. You just need to add flow here and I use two of the flows here, which I created here. This is basically Azure AI and with uh, this is basically Azure open AI. So that's a two difference here and here I use here Azure Open AI and Azure AI buttons. So on select property of this button, which I used here on the top, you can see which is Azure AI Power Apps. That's the flow name dot run. I'm passing this as a parameter to that. So that's the thing which I used here and that is the only thing which is going for Power Apps and the return value which is prompt result what we have used in the last step of the flow, which is a return result to power automate from power automate to power apps. And I'm just using that value as a kind of variable, which is global variable set this one prompt result equal to inside to this one. So that's the uh, use of that. So the result what I'm using it here, the prompt result I'm using it in the other text box. If you see it on the other text box in the text property, the default value which is the prompt result. So that's why we are taking the input from this text box sending it to Azure Open AI and getting the result from Power Automate and using it here in the text box. Right, that's how it actually works. The same similar concept which we also used it for Azure AI. So here the difference is instead of using this Azure Open AI Studio, I use here Azure AI Studio. This is what I used here. So if I come back here to Azure AI Studio, this is how it will look like. Here it has a little bit different process. But first of all, you can directly go to build here from the top menu and this will give you the same option. I mean the similar options, the data indexes, deployment and here we also have a playground here. So we'll directly go to this deployment options and here if I click on create. In the Azure AI, open AI, we had only chat GPT open AI services, but here you can see Azure open AI. Not only that we have a curated by Azure AI. These are all the Falcon, Mistral and also we have a Desi and then we also have a Meta which is Llama model and also we have Hugging Face and Nvidia and also the many other. These are the large language models available in Azure AI, which is not in Azure open AI. That's an advantage. 
So you can select whatever LLM you want here, and then you can click on confirm and you can deploy the model here based on that need. For example, I just use here, which is the same chat GPT 16 turbo and use the same thing standard 5k PM, the same thing. And also I just use text embedding option, which is for this one. This is just a reference I added here. So after adding the deployment, same I can come back here to playground. And here also I can give the instruction, the similar interface which will be look and feel here. But this is a more advantage option which we have here. And there are other options which we have here and prompt flow kind of thing. We'll discuss about that in future video. So here this is about the information. So let me copy and paste the value here and send this to chat. All right, now let's talk about find information only about flowers. And apply changes. All right, so let's clear the chat. And if I click on view code on the top, you can see this is also giving me information only about flowers. All right. And now I'm just using another one, which is why Pluto is not there. And click on send. Amazing. So the result you see Pluto is not considered a flower because it is not a plant. Pluto is a dwarf planet located in the solar system. It does not have any characters to a flower such as petals, leaves or reproductive structure. That's amazing because the question why I asked is that's the same. So if I ask this one, how many planets do we have in our solar system? If I copy and paste here. We have eight planets in the Mercury Venus when it was dropped. So it is actually giving the result. So if I come back here and set the temperature to zero, clear the chart here. Maybe ask some different question, maybe because of the cache it is giving the result. So when is circuit started? I'm sorry, but I have specialized in providing information about flowers. I don't have information about sports, even like cricket. Is there any specific you would like to know about flowers? That's an amazing thing, right? Because we have instructed to give only about the flowers. That's why it is giving me information about that. So now the main agenda of this one is basically you can come here, playground, and if you click on view code, this will also give the same information like we have seen in the previously. We have Python, JSON, C sharp, and curl. Here also we can need to click on JSON. And now we'll see the information about this one. So this is the message system and user message. And this is the replay from that. That's why the assistant role here. So we don't need assistant here. If I click here and clear the chat. And come back again to see the view code and look for the JSON. Now I don't see any user information or any assistant information. So that's why I added manually in Power Automate here. If I go to this other one, uh, which is this one yeah if i come back here now if i click on view code i have also another endpoint and key here i can just make use of that endpoint and key it is, everything is similar here look for power apps and then http response the only change is here the http here the uri and the api key the rest everything is same no other changes on to this one so if i go back to the power apps here now if i play this one and then if I talk about Sunflower, click on Azure AI, then this will give me the information about that. Yeah, these are all the information about the Sunflower here. That's amazing. So I hope you got a brief idea about what is AI and what is Azure AI and what is Azure Open AI and how you can integrate this with in Power Apps and Power Automate with low code and no code functionality. Now the entire demo, what you have seen, I have not used any major complex coding here right it's just a low code or no code kind of feature so you can easily gear up and start using these ai services all right if you like this video just hit the big thumbs up button if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed it just hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comment section below what are the things which you are looking forward in our future videos because now we are broadening our experience not only to power bi and power platform we are expanding it to fabric and now we are adding up into Azure AI because that's how it will work. The data will come using this fabric and then it can go in two different directions. So that's what we have used here. For example, that is what I'm preparing here. This is the one. So data comes in through fabric with all the fabric functionality and it can go in two different ways, whether it can be used in AI 
and then we can use it in Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, or even in Power BI. So this also has to be this way. Either also this can be go like this, right? This is how it will work. So we can make use of this functionality as a default thing for take 18 in going forward. So I'm looking forward for your subscription and like and share about this video. And I really need a lot of subscription in order to get motivations to make further few more videos. See you in the next video.